Actually, I've done it. Let's officially start episode one of Things You Didn't Ask For and Didn't Want To Know. I was just going to say, you got the name right. Yay! But you didn't. I didn't. Didn't need to know. Didn't want to know, so certainly. Yeah. Wasn't the name of the art thing things you didn't ask for? Didn't this is a great to first topic. Topic. <laughs> what the heck is the name of this thing? No, Donald is. You're famous for giving what I consider to be a great title wrong all the time. It's things you didn't ask for and didn't need to know. Ah. Oh, there's another note for you. Put that down to change that <laughs> and take your personal number off the website. I know okay, about yeah. the texts. Yeah. Just to see that the crack because that's hilarious. This is definitely one kind of outtakes from this <laughs> something need. No, this is actually we've begun. Didn't need to know. Oops. Right back to the start. Now. Um so I am Donal, for everyone's gonna know me, and sorry, that was probably blasting the mic there. I'm Donal. Um you are I am Barry and Mark. Hey, nice. So um to anyone who is looking on. You can go to the domain things you didn't ask for dot com, and um, eventually, I plan to have a um, what's that called again? The the thing where we can get money. Patreon. Patreon. My God. Yeah. I plan to have a Patreon. Also, so, for anyone that was born after two thousand, domain is just another old word for a website. All oh, right, I don't even know. <laughs> so we we um we'll have. I think we should have a Patreon. Well, I think we should start with a casual conversation for our guests and ourselves. What do we each expect out of the website? Think we're going to get out of the website and hope, not the website, the podcast, and yeah. hope from the podcast. Okay, okay. We'll start with Donald because I think you're the most ambitious and hopeful. I think yeah. of all of us. For a I think this uh, has tons of potential because the aim that, or my, my vision for the laptop, but my vision for the uh, podcast is just to talk. It's like an avenue to get to talk to people we wouldn't normally speak to. So, for example, I'd love to t- speak to our current president. He's one of my goals to speak to, you know, Mike Vegan. Mm-hmm. Now, if we just walk up to, well, we won't walk up to Michael Levy. If you were to write to the, what's the, Oris. the Oris, but you have to write to an actual, I think he's a soldier, the, I don't know, I mean, if you write to the Department of the Oath Law, you'd yeah. get to him. Yeah, so, so you'd get to him, but he'd be like, uh, I'm sure, you know, he's busy that day. <laughs> well, I didn't speak, a, I didn't say a date. Right. But, um, so, but, but for, so, but if we have a podcast, that's an avenue where we can like, hey, look, we have X amount of people. So I'd love to just talk to different people because there are, like, I think that it literally doesn't matter who the person is. Everyone has an interesting story. That's, you know. Absolutely. The, 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 some people seem stereotypical in that, like, oh, they're, they do this and they do that and they do this. And like from the outside, everyone can be categorized. But personally, everyone has their own journey and their own story and everything like that. And that's what I think would be cool to talk to you and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I, I, you're, Donald is the driver of this. Donald is the one, this is his idea. He's doing most of the work behind the scenes, the website, all the other bits and pieces. I'm along for the ride. Um, I'm along for the fun of it. I'm along for the, the, the joy of creation doing something different um, and that's really why I'm here is because this sounds like a fun project to be involved in doing something with two of my best friends and uh, having fun doing it so that's essentially why I'm here yeah. uh, and, and that's what, what I hope to get from the experience as well is just more of that nice hopefully can I ask you a question at this point because yeah. I don't know I'm going to get the most fundamental underlying format here are we Three people talking to each other, or are we three people talking to the camera to the viewers at home? Um, I didn't probably a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B, I think. Because I was in my mind just, I guess I don't know. Are we just talking? I think talking the odd, the the odd uh, Jim from the office. Yeah, and the camera's okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I guess 
right now we're doing the whole talking to the camera thing, I guess. I don't know. I'm just yeah. trying to get my own head around where am I where am I at this place at and what, what am I I think we're we're talking to each other. Definitely we're talking to each other. Yeah. Okay, well I was gonna say just in response to your I think your ambitions are you're gonna to talk to you know, interesting people, you're gonna get blown up big, you're gonna have a Patreon, you're gonna make money, it's gonna be a huge thing. Yeah. Um where do you see it going, Barry? Anything has the potential to be a huge thing. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows what's gonna hit. The zeitgeist, I suppose. Um when it's made and when it's out there. That's um, Jessica Black, is that her name? The one who's yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, or those guys that made the fairy doors up in uh, up in mid- the Midlands somewhere. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you heard about them. They, they made these yeah. fairy doors and then one of the Kardashians tweeted about it and suddenly they, they had to open up new factories and all sorts. Yeah. So you just never know what's going what's gonna to hit uh, with people and what's going to go viral, I suppose, and what's, what's not. The odds are probably quite slim of this blowing up and being huge and having a big job and making money. But at the same time, it absolutely could. Why not? Yeah. Is it like we, if we can have interesting conversations that people are interested in listening to, then certainly. Hmm. So be interesting. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think personally, I think I'm a naturally boring person. <laughs> which isn't great to start off. But also with. counters exactly what you said previously, which was everyone has a tail, everyone has their own point of view. Oh, yeah. Except but me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because I was except the food rule. No, no. I, I think it's like, because I could go on about, be- okay, I'm speaking from experience. I've spoken to people. I've seen their eyes glaze over. Yeah, but trust me, that just means it's, 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 you're. <laughs> well, that just means you're basically. Presenting the wrong story to the wrong audience. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Like Hitler was very interesting to you know even neo Nazis today, but it would be boring to somebody who just has no interest in politics. Yeah, yeah. So if you're like, and the reason I'm saying this is, I know I have bored people so bad that I'm actually conscious sometimes of just not talking about something. <laughs> like if I get like talking about aliens, I just don't stop them. Just don't, and I just don't anymore. I literally don't. Some episode maybe we will. But because I know if I'm talking to a normal person about it, the most amazing topic that's real today, people are just boring. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But I think ultimately I don't I wouldn't be worried about being boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah, once you find an audience, and that's true in life as it is in podcasts, yeah. if you're talking to someone who has absolutely no interest in what you're talking about, it doesn't matter how good you are at telling the story, they're not gonna be interested in it. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's simply all it is now. If you're talking to someone who is interested in what you're talking about, they listen to you all day. So, um, we were going to break this into... Actually, wait, Mart, what do you think about yeah. stuff? My take on this podcast is, yeah. I'm definitely going to enjoy doing it, but I have a feeling the podcast rocket is already shot into orbit. And we're still standing on the surface of the Earth. Uh-huh. And I think at this stage, no, I agree with you, Barry, anything could blow up and become big and it could happen overnight but I just feel like my hand on my heart a few of our friends will tune into the ad episode people will get bored fairly quick Mm -hmm. but I don't think this is ever going to go anywhere I don't think it's ever going to make any money I don't think we're ever going to interview anyone famous but I think eh, if we sit around every week or two sit around have a chat enjoy our own company and our own conversation I genuinely think that's all it's ever going to be but I'm okay with that well from Here's an interesting metric in that case. Who's a person we could interview that you would say, don't know the show is officially successful? Or what is a metric that you would say the show is successful? Is it numbers? If we had like, if we had a hundred people, because I think, I think I'm going to put this up on um, a, a hosting site for podcasts called Anchor. And I think Anchor shows like, here's how many times it was downloaded. And Anchor is owned by Spotify. But can I ask a question? And sorry for interrupting, but just so I understand myself, does that mean people who use Spotify, people who use Spotify can find us in Spotify, but if people use any other no, it's podcast my, thing, like what Anchor says is that uh, you look up there, right? What Anchor says, Anchor okay. is like uh, Anchor podcast, and I think it says like um, uh, I think it says something like, you know, the, the 
it will spread it out to loads of different um okay. so different if, platforms. If you're not sure off the top of your head, I don't think we need to go well, try well, and ascertain I, that now. Yeah, I ha I have looked into it and, and it's my understanding that um it's my understanding that when you have a, when when you sign up an anchor it'll put on Spotify. I know for a fact it'll put on Spotify. I think it'll put on other stuff. But more importantly for us, you can see the numbers. It, there's like some metric story about it. Yeah, see, that's more importantly yeah. for us as the content creators. Yeah. I'm thinking of from an end user perspective. Because I know for me, I have my podcast app and I like it. Mm. And then I listen to every single podcast I listen to on my podcast app because it's a good podcast app designed for podcasts. Then every now and again, I'll always scroll through Joe Rogan, boring, silly, stupid, whatever. Yeah. Then I'll find an interesting cat guest and I'm like, oh, listen to this. But I do not like Spotify as an app to play podcasts. I think it's fine for an app to play uh, music, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. Just Spotify. Yeah. No, that, like, that's funny because I listen to Spotify all the time now. You and, and for for podcasts. Oh, okay. I mean, it could be a personal tasting, but I guess either way, I'm just curious. Yeah. What footprint your upload will make in the podcast world? Will it be in one app or will it be in multiple I would, apps? I would hope that it would be in multiple apps. Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. Because I know I know that there are apps that I know that there is pieces look to, to close on this. I know there is soft pieces of software and they spread it out to loads of them. So basically the point is what's the question is what's your metric for success? Is it having Tons of people listen to us, an X amount of people listen to us every day, or... No, my metric for success is, if we just do this regularly and I enjoy it, um, and if no one ever listens to it, <clears throat> I'm still considered... That's success. actually a very good answer. And also, I consider that that is the vastly most likely outcome of it. Just, yeah. to, be, just to be clear. <coughs> no, I'm, only, I'm not trying to be a negative money, yeah. but I'm just being honest. No, no, that's true. The, uh, so next week, join myself and Donald as we discuss... What do we get? So, Anchor is a free software to create podcasts. Yes. It contains tools that allow users to record and edit audio, arrange it into podcast episode, publish podcasts to listening platforms, and monetize content by collecting listener contributions or adding advertisements into episodes. Uh, Anchor can be used on iOS, Android, iPad, and web browsers. So, it seems to be like you still have to... Well, the fact that it said allows you to upload to multiple platforms. Yeah. That's the line I wanted to hear. That's yeah. not good. That's what I was... Can you know what, Oh, go on. This actually, since you did mention, um, what did you say there about um, people advertising? Yeah, I said, um, and monetize content by collecting listener contributions or adding advertisements into episodes. This is a good spot for our sponsor. Oh, there's one thing I'll say straight away. Firstly, I don't, you said you don't listen to a lot of podcasts before, right? right? You do listen to them, obviously, right? I know every podcast that I listen to, there's ads at the start. And then the podcast starts. Yeah. I've come across a few where they can intersperse the podcast with ads. I just stopped listening to those. But there's like, you know what? There's plenty more podcasts than the sea. Yeah. Because at least, now, I hate that I'm going to mention Joe Rogan because the only reason. I think Joe Rogan will be mentioned many times here. You should probably have a Joe Rogan count. No. <laughs> I'm just going to go on the record as explain. <laughs> Joe Rogan count. Yeah. I'm going to go on the record as explain. The only reason I, I always liken this to Joe Rogan because I listened to a lot of the literally early, early, early days Joe Rogan's when he was like episode one, episode two, literally starting off like this. Yeah. You know, in his basement with this crappy setup and, you know, no one listening kind of thing. So that's why I, I can definitely see that. But ultimately, anyway, him and um, there's another podcaster I listen to, Lex Friedman, for example. Like he, Lex would say, I think, you know, the ads. You know, I think he'll say it in the, in the description of the podcast, you know, ads until six minutes and 30 seconds. So if the timestamp, the whole thing. Yeah, but he, he basically can tell you the timestamp so you can skip all the ads. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's nothing here. And he even says, you know, hey, you want to help me out? Listen to the ads. Yeah. So my point is, I would be thinking if you're going to put ads on this ever, put them at the start, let people skip them if they want. Okay. Yeah. Definitely don't stick ads ever in the middle because it's just interrupting and annoying yeah. and off putting. Well, we already have our first sponsor, don't we? Don't look, me, don't look at me, I didn't sponsor us. I have no money. No, no. Um... Oh, I, I don't know where that or who he or. No way, oh, no, no. You have a sponsor when you have money in your hand. No, but the sponsor is when they give equipment. Who give equipment? You're pointing suspiciously at the table. No, I'm pointing WhatsApp. Like uh, Rachel said, you give us a phone. Oh, yeah, but again, do you have a phone? No. No. No, so what do you have? Nothing, nothing. Glorious, glorious dreams. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm just adamant. 
Okay, yeah. You have something or you don't have anything. Yeah. Um, okay, so... So basically, we're, like for everything I say about money and all this kind of thing, for sponsors and all this kind of thing, obviously, the main reason we're doing this is just to hang out. That's it. That's pretty much it, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's okay to have a, you know, a hope that it's going to blow up. Oh, no, of course. I mean, but, uh, you know, if we were getting paid, we, we, Yeah, you while know, we are right. recording the podcast, it's easier and it'll be better when we have our own mics. But that's basically what we're looking for. Okay. So, um... Okay, I think we've done the intro. What do we expect to get out of it? Yeah. Next. What's next one? Yeah, this, this is what I think was a free flowing conversation that just comes out of the intro. Look at my sheet. Copy the picture on. <laughs> no, because I, I, I thought we were doing that in the end. Yeah, no, yeah. Front, so yeah. So, Risky, um, here's what I was going to say. To timestamp the episode, today is like the 31st of January. I was going to say, what's an interesting thing that's happening in the world at the moment? There's loads, most of it dire. But here's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, there's a company, uh, well, there's loads of them, um, that do stuff like vintage clothes, right? And it's a huge business. They gather up clothes, they sell them to vintage clothes warehouses, and the shops, vintage clothes shops, buy them and sell them, right? Mm-hmm. That goes without saying. Well, what point is vintage clothes, right? It's clothes from last year. But, well, no, well, uh, well, most of your wardrobe, I'd say, would probably well, be vintage. Yeah, it's vintage. Vintage. So, but, Let's just say a technical definition for I don't know here. if there is a technical definition, but yeah, anything that's kind of old. What do you, yeah. 60s, 70s, 80s, I think, is what they oh, kind of deal with. from five years ago that wouldn't qualify. Probably not, no. But it depends on what it is, I guess. But anyway, there's, it's like, there's like brokerages and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, one of those warehouses in the UK got a bale of clothes uh, from America. And in it, they found a, a leather jacket, a leather coat. And they went, oh, this is different. This is not... 70s, this is not 60s, um, this is this is probably not 50s, now they were almost bang on with that, but it turns out it was 1850s. Really? Whoa. Yeah, they found a coat in a jacket, a leather jacket with tassels and everything, that was, they think, the nearest they can think, it's a, um, an indigenous Canadian, either, uh, what was it, um, Metis or Cree Indian yeah. jacket. With intricate beading and all this kind of stuff, but as soon as they know these guys deal with this all the time, they open up the bale, found this jacket, and went, "Oh, this is different." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're trying to find a way of getting it back to those people. To, to the is this like people. Indian as in Native American Indian? American, American, yeah, American. Indigenous American. Canadians, Indigenous Canadians. So. Oh yeah, okay. Um, but how? Like if, if I had a T-shirt and it was in hundred fifty years time, it would be found a bit. It wouldn't be existing. It's leather. No, it's leather. Properly, you know, properly kept. Like we had as T-shirts, Mark, because we buy the leather T-shirts. Stores. For one thing, different lifestyles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they let it last, let it last for a long, long time. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think it's wonderful. They found it. Oh, they're no, trying no, to find, find it, get back to actually. And, and have people. you heard about the thing that's happening? That reminds me of the thing that's happening at the moment in the news, um, in the news, in the world. Where you know the way that the have you ever been to the British Museum? No, I think I was, but I can't remember. No. Okay, so the British Museum has you walk in there and there's for certain it's kind of it's huge. Okay. It's for my benefit, right? Because you're making it sound like. There's one museum in Britain. Have we been there? I I presume, okay, there's actually there's a, a spot in London that has like tons of, of museums. Now, oh, square, square, isn't it? Uh, I, just I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because you actually you walk you can walk underground and there all of these big museums are in this one area and they're all connected by like footpaths or like by tunnels beneath them. It's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. But you can um so the the British Museum. So I say, when I say the British Museum, it's because it's literally called the British Museum, is my mm-hmm. understanding. Yeah. But the British Museum has like thousands, and I mean thousands and thousands of thousands, like eighty thousand. Well, I don't know. I don't know how many items the British Museum has. But they only put a small percentage of those on show, mm-hmm. and they would put the most famous ones. So there was like a dinosaur in the British Museum when you walked in there. Okay, and that's David Attenborough had a, or am I thinking of the Natural History Museum maybe? Actually, it's not the was natural, natural, natural history. history. Yeah. So that basically all the stolen goods would be the British Museum. It's the no, but they're all stolen. No, of course they're. Yeah, you know, Bavaria, no, uh, Wakanda forever. Yeah. No, no, but that's the literally thing you were, no, but that's that's, that's, from. that's literally what they're. That's literally what some of the thing is. It's like um, there's, there's a whole movement now where the Egypt, where Egyptians are saying like you know, oh. 
hey, this is our, you know, these are our Relics. obelisks. Mm -hmm. These are our statues. Give them back to us, please. Mm -hmm. And the English, a lot of, some of the English curators are saying, like, you know, well, they're kind of like, you know, what grounds do they have to take it back? Okay. And all the question is, in terms of the law, you yeah. know, no, that's what we we bought, we bought this square from Lord Farquaad. Yeah, no, but I was looking at a video, and they were saying, like, um, I was looking at a video on YouTube, so it's a good source. Yeah, yeah. And they were saying, um, <laughs> there was like a soldier had gone, he had looted uh, a archaeological site, and he had labeled the stuff that he was going to send back to the museum, he had labeled it loot. So they know that they were very the RPG. They, they knew that they were stealing stuff and that it was wrong. They knew they were taking it incorrectly. You know, but it was like, but the belief was there, like. But well, we won this battle, or we won this war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's war. It's war. Yeah. So it's spoils of war. So then the question is like, if something is the spoils of war, should you give it back? One hundred percent. But but by that rationale. But I'm Irish. We we don't have any spoils. Of war. <laughs> no, no. But by that rationale, where where do spoils of war stop? Do you just go back one generation? That is a good question because I don't know if you've heard ever of that. Uh, now, I'm going to go into the realms where people of colour, this is the inflammatory topic. And I don't know how relevant this is. It's really not relevant in Ireland, but it is a racial issue. It's like the whole thing of America and slavery. And there's actually, who was it? Um, Benedict Cumberbatch. His, I think, great great grandfather or something owned a slave plantation or a plantation that was not it wasn't a slave plantation that was selling slaves around here but was run and worked on by slaves and i know i read an article about it and benedict cumberbatch's mother was telling him when he was going to go and become famous and all she was saying you should change your name you don't want your name to be associated with you know that whole slave plantation thing going on and he was like nope that's my name and i'm not going to hide from my past so he didn't but now there's a class action suit i think against him by people who are ancestors of these slaves who are like Hey, you owe us money because your family made money on the back of my family and they didn't get paid for it, so I'm not paying So they're essentially saying the sins of the father. Well, yes, but the thing is, it goes to the whole element of reparations where it's yeah. like you could trace, and this is a valid point. Go back 100 years, there's some guy who was exploiting loads of slaves, just to use the most extreme example to mm -hmm. keep the point easy to make. Um, and he makes millions on it. Now his family's rich. That wealth goes down by a few generations. Now two generations later, somebody is going to go to college that they can easily afford. Whereas the two generations later from the slave's family, slavery is no more a thing. That they don't have the resources that someone else has because the work that their ancestors made went to that person's ancestors. He gets to go to college today, get an education, get a privileged background. Where's my stuff? That, that is, it's an injustice, but how do you fix it? It's and incredibly difficult. Uh, it's a quite because on one on one hand, I would say well, you can't really blame Benedict Cumberbatch for what his ancestors did, but on the other hand, people have suffered because of things that happened in, in, in his family, and and you know, like it's that's a real moralistic dilemma. It's a but also the fact is, it's not just the people suffered, but it's like. You currently today, well not you, but yeah. say a person is benefiting Still, today yeah. from the wealth that was generated at that time by that person's labor, and someone else is disadvantaged today because their ancestors' labor was exploited by mm. someone else who gave it to their their kids or whatever. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know where I sit on it. I do kind of think if you go in down there at all, everybody has fucked up stuff in their background, and. How again? We're, Irish, said, we're, we're, we're Irish. We probably don't. Yeah. No, but you know, sometimes I randomly think, right? You could go back fifty thousand years. Yeah. You have an ancestor who lived back then, who did something to survive, probably killing someone else at some point over the thing. Definitely, if you go back yeah, yeah. thousands of thousands, it's kind of like, what's the most screwed up thing that your ancestor did to live? I don't know. Yeah. I just kind of randomly think. It. I mean, yeah. In, so if someone, was, if so, if one of my ancestors like. 10,000 years ago or something, uh, killed a guy to stay alive. But then that guy that he killed had a wife and kid and they ended up being impoverished by it because they no longer had a hunter-gatherer to go and kill the woolly mammoth for them. Yeah, they, yeah. they stayed in poverty the whole way down. And, and my generation <laughs> stayed, years later stayed in <laughs> lower middle class the whole way down. 
could that person uh, come after me because they had a slightly worse life than I did? But by that rationale, let's say there's someone and their wealth is like, let's say, their wealth is 50 out of 100. Okay. Okay. Middle class. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're middle class. And if someone then, based on this family that is middle class, if they go and if they get rich because of nice things, but purely because of this middle class, and they go up to 80, they're upper class. Mm -hmm. Okay, 50 generations on, does, do, do these people own their good status to these people? That's essentially what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, but nobody looks at it that way. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, well, it's the reverse no, of what we're There saying. are people who look at it that way. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what exactly it is, but it's called reparation, where it's like a movement of people are saying, you know, we as a, you know, a group of people have been disadvantaged and we can trace our lineage back to that point. See, it's, no, I know we kind of were speaking like actually, but you say 10,000 years ago, that shit squared up because whatever's gone is done. But if you go back two or three generations and be like, oh, actually, your great grandfather ripped off my great grandfather, give me my money, bitch. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, it's more tangible because it's traceable. Yeah. And if you can also see the benefits that have gone down that line that were should have been here and aren't, you can see the point. But also, I can see, I don't know how you could ever fix that. Because if yeah. you, what is a Pandora's box that you open and try to fix it, and you just make, make opened up a, what's it? Yeah, because do you strip, a, do you strip the number batches of every penny they have and give it to the descendants of the slaves they, their family once owned? Mm. Do you strip them of every penny? I feel bad not using Benedict Cumberbatch well, as an example because I like him. Benedict, if you're you know. listening, it's not first. <laughs> we'll have to have him on the next week. Yeah, sure. well, we'll just this. No, but I, I, yeah, no, but I, I guess, I, I just, I don't think it's really, you can't square that up as two yeah, it's kind of, but it's kind of different if it's like the um, Egyptians are like, well, you have a big ass monument in there or a huge jewel that you literally robbed out of my house a hundred years ago. I don't know, that seems more tangible because it's literally the thing. You know, if it's like, well, this wealth that intangibly went from generation to generation and it grew in that bank over there, whereas I could have had it and that's all moving pieces that changed over time. But if it's like an actual thing that is in a museum under a glass case there and it's mine, give me back my thing. Yeah. It's like the whole thing as well, I suppose, even closer time-wise of these groups that are trying to find works of art that were stolen during World War II by the Nazis in Germany that just that disappeared but these people they were taken out of their this stuff was taken out of people's houses and most of the people were sadly they were killed uh, but there were some survivors of the family who obviously they moved way up you know they're in America they're all over the world they're in, you know Israel and places and they know when I was growing up we had a this artist painting yeah. in our living room and then suddenly that that painting turns up in a museum they then have there's a group that they can go to and say that was my painting. No, oh, yeah, yeah, nice. And uh, yeah, 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 and, and it's a, it's it, 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 they, it sometimes works because they can trace, and sometimes the people have actual um, providence, what they call it, for a painting. I think it's providence. I might be the wrong word now, but there's a thing where you can sh prove the ownership of something going back years, and when a painting is sold, the providence is changed to that's not the way. I so what would happen if you're like? Uh, art collector and you buy this thing for a million quid and, and somebody tapped you in the shoulder a year later and goes actually that was stolen give it back yeah. it's like if some guy pulls up outside your house and opens it the van door yeah hey boss do you want to buy the jackets <laughs> they last for 180 years <laughs> well, okay <laughs> only if if it's a green jacket maybe well come here did you did you watch that movie i can't remember what it's called there's no way i'm gonna remember but uh i thought it was a war movie so oh what's it oh monuments man Yes, yes, yeah, that was like, sort of thinking of it, I mean. yeah, good, good, good spot, but it, it was all of a sudden just about, there was a scene of a big battle that just happened, and they're just driving in, and all you're seeing is wreckage afterwards, and I was like, oh, okay. Good movie, though. It, it, oh, it was. John, John Zimmerman, is Brad Pitt in that as well? He is, yeah. Is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do I not remember that? Or am I confusing it with um, Fury, which is, oh, if I, I am. am. <laughs> Bobby would say Fury. Uh, <laughs> what I mean? Fury is what happened an hour before. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, yeah. that moved on. And, and he jumped out of the tank. <laughs> yeah, monuments, man. But, um. 
But what about monuments? And it's it's like no. It's I'm just saying. I'm sorry. It's about yeah. uh, this world. Uh, this is based on a true story of this World War Two. Yeah. Matt Damon, a group sorry. of soldiers that oh yeah, that were kind of put together and sent on this mission of go into the war zone and collect and reclaim uh, stolen arts and stuff that the Nazis were trying to make up with when they were trying to escape. <clears throat> Actually, there was a movie that I watched recently. Speaking of war movies, um, we all watched Platoon when we were younger. Amazing movie. <laughs> what I didn't realize, and I only kind of learned this when I listened to an interview with uh, Oliver Stone. Huh? Is that a trilogy? Actually, no, I never knew that. Okay. What? We'll, we'll circle back to that. Yeah. Um, but it was Oliver Stone's movie of very loosely, not autobiographical, but based on his own experience mm -hmm. of when he was in Vietnam. And you know how Charlie Sheen's guy was like, you know, they were like, hey man, how did you get up here? And he's like, I volunteered. And they're like, what? Yeah. But Oliver Stone was educated, didn't have to go to Vietnam, but he volunteered and he went there and realized, oh man, this war is bullshit, it's farce. But he went in there thinking, yeah, do the right thing and whatever. So in the interview I read it's holy moly. But there's a I don't know that I texted you this and I meant to. It's the platoon of our time today. It's about a, it's again written by a guy who was in the Iraq War one. He was the tip of the spear kind of first platoon. The Vanguard, war. is it? No. That was called that was the Vanguard is. Do you mean the Vanguard is and are you speculating that that's the name of the movie? Or no, no, that's, the that's what a Vanguard is, is tip of the spear. I don't know, is it? Oh, okay, yeah. I, I didn't know that. I know it's a crappy Call of Duty, but I didn't need to know it, but now you know it. Wait, okay. <laughs> but um, this movie is kind of like the platoon of the modern era, where it's this guy, he's in the war, thinking, going to go in and do good and fight the enemies. But then he finds himself uh, tasked with, you know, you go over there and fix up this well in a village or something like that but it's based on it's written, the script is written by a guy who was really in iraq war one the uh, operation desert storm yeah yeah and he he was just realizing you know this war is you know it, it's not as black and threat. white as we were told there's a common threat there isn't it they go off to war they realize war sucks well, exactly yeah but I, it just reminded me so much of platoon mm -hmm. but it was our modern version and actually it had what's the name of it was those 30 years old that war but yeah, I know it's weird. Yeah, exactly. It's probably going to be. We were, we were actually when I think when Platoon came out, when Platoon came out, we were probably close to the Vietnam War than we are to the Operation Desert Storm. Well, wait a second now. Wait a second. Platoon came out in nineteen eighty six. Eighty six, yeah. So, the Vietnam War was on. It was in the late in the mid in the early seventies, I think. Okay, so that's twenty years. We're now thirty years from nineteen ninety when the first when the Desert Storm happened. <laughs> What? Are you serious? Know. Yeah, we were actually closer to Vietnam War when, when we were the, watching when we were the platoon that we would have been. Holy crap. Do you know the name of the movie? Yes, I just remembered it real quick. It's called Sandcastle. But anyway, sorry. Okay. Real quick, the reason I thought it was so good is again, it was just it was written by a guy who was in the war. He wasn't a writer or a movie director or anything. Yeah. He was just this guy who was there. And then he just realized, you know, what a pile of shit. And I think he was actually sitting in Saddam Hussein's palace that was sacked watching the platoon. Yeah. And he realized, I should write a movie about my experience in the war. And again, it's not fully autobiographical, it's just based on his experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff in there is fictitious, but it's representative of what that war was really it's like. The Sandcastle. Yeah, I would say, well, not this Sandcastle, just Sandcastle. Okay. Google it with Henry Cavill, because also Henry Cavill was in it. You ah, would not recommend him as The Witcher. But um, it's a movie I would recommend. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's great, but if you like Platoon, and if you know the context of this movie, it's like, oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, so there are two other things that we could talk about really quickly, um, just as timestamps, and just to get our opinion down on paper, as it were. Who is pro the Ukrainian invasion? The Russians. Wait, yeah. Are you expecting anyone in the West to say, well, I'm in favor of the Russians? No, it's just a nice, interesting way to say, you know. Well, let me ask you a question, right? Well, you know how, obviously, the Russians are the baddies? Oh, by the way, I do use an air force, and yes, they are the baddies, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, if you ever, and I've listened to a lot of um, New York Times podcasts, in interviewing Russians, interviewing Russians who are pro-war, Russians who are against the war, and families have fallen yeah, out over yeah. and everything, and what you realise is, they're just, there's a Russian news station completely brainwashing its own people. Oh, yeah. Kind of a Fox News, old people style in America kind of thing. Yeah. The, at least in America they have other stations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that yeah. kind of balances all of it. And you realise how 
I guess how sad it is for the Russian people, because you know for a fact in, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing in 20 years, Putin will be dead. Hopefully Russia will be a bit better than it is at least. The guys are drinking the blood of innocence and whatever. But, you know, you'd hope that they're going to realise, oh, that was a mistake. And how awful would that feel? But um, I'm just thinking, even though I don't want to sound like a conspiracy head, but how much, because it's definitely happening to some degree, how much of the news we're hearing is, I guess, the spin from the other side? Actually, it should have to be. You're 100% right. What we're hearing is the, our, we're hearing our version. Yeah, the Western. We're hearing the Western's version. Mm. You know, because there is a school of thought. Like, I, I remember when the Ukraine invasion began, I was walking through Eaton and uh, Eaton's bookstore. And I bought this book on uh, just like Russia. It was a brilliant book. And I stopped reading it because I literally got sick of just thinking about Vladimir you know, Putin. And this is a guy who loved, uh, I loved Russia. And Putin I thought Russia was great. I thought Russia right. was great. Genuine. I, you know what? And I still stand by it. Russia is amazing. Russia is amazing. Okay. It's just that the people, it's like that scene, that line in uh, in uh, Braveheart. Braveheart. The problem with Scotland is that it's full of Scots. Okay, so the problem with Russia is that it's full of flaming Russian politicians that are bad politicians. I'm really glad it's Russian politicians, not just... And not the Russian people, yeah, because yeah, I've seen the Russian people are actually... Oh, no, no, exactly. Like, I, in, I've only met a few, you know, a handful of Russians. Yeah. Every single one of them is lovely. I've never met any Russian tea, Russian tea, Russian. Freudian slip. I never have met any Russian politicians. And if I will, I'll never have tea with them. Do you know that thing? Yeah. Well, Russians are amazing, but there's one thing about them. Yeah. Russia is mental, because I'll never forget one time, completely randomly, me and Gavin were up for a few beers, chatting away, and there's this guy just clearly firing and standing on his own, lost in the bar. So I start talking to him, you know, hey, and just give you something to talk to for a while. Yeah, yeah. We're chatting away to him. Anyway, he was Russian, whatever. And I was like, hey, man, you know, fist bump, because I was like, I'm trying to replace the fist bump with the handshake, which, by the way, is something that I was working on way before COVID. <laughs> like this whole thing of, let me just put my clammy, sweaty mm -hmm. palm rubbing all over your skin. No. And also, I don't know how PG-13 this podcast wants to be, but it's like, think of every man that you shake their hand with. 90% oh, yeah. of people are right-handed. 90% of people are... That's, that's your penis hand. Yeah, and your right hand, yeah. right? I mean, come on, right? I don't want to, ever. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm the, that's one other good thing that came out of, out of the pandemic. Yeah. Although they did say, oh wait, let's just rub our shoulders against each other and then yeah. look close to our faces for some reason. Yeah. That's just also dumb. But anyway, um, was but I was, yes, it was like, yeah. oh, there you go. But I went to the Russian guy, you know, oh, fist bump, I was trying to replace the head shape with the fist bump. He, goes, he just looks at me and goes, totally deadpan. No one likes a Russian. <laughs> I was like, you hate him, all right. <laughs> it was just so funny. Yeah, but yeah. but it, it, that's so Russian. They're like, they're so proud. And so, you know, oh, no one will strike is us it, down. Is, is, and yes, Russia, they're poor and crap. X, Y, Z. Yeah, and another thing that I remember about Russia. Do you remember when this comet crashed Earth in 2013 or something? And uh, because it happens to be the modern day, loads of people have um, their phones out or whatever. So there's amazing footage from people's dash cams and people's cars seeing the thing just flying over the city. But there's some, Minsk, is it? I have no idea where it is. It was yeah, somewhere in Russia. But yeah. there's one video footage of um, some guys are outside having a beer or a barbecue or whatever and there's like snow everywhere and they're like recording it and then he puts it down for, and you can see that fucker's in his sandals out in the snow which barbecue. he was you know doing whatever the hell he's doing barbecue like, that is so Russian never mind a meteor flyer over the city it's just <laughs> yeah so but the, but the book I the book that I read and my facts mm -hmm. are going to go 100% wrong all over the place here but it's like the book the, the beginning of the book starts off with that Ukraine, um, Ukraine was settled on a river. I forget the name of the river in Ukraine. Definitely should look this up. You, they, they, I, I think it was, I don't know if it was Kiev was settled. And then basically the short version is then the Mongols were coming, do, do their thing. like Genghis Khan's grandson, I think it was, like, I think it was him. No, was coming in, his, his and he tour. was like, yeah, he was literally doing his world tour. And he yeah. came to Ukraine, and they were like getting their asses kicked. So they literally put out a job application. Who wants to save us? Okay, and uh, this guy, I think it was a uh, don't change. No, I think it was a Viking. It was like something the Rus. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. so this Rus came, but he, I, I don't know why. 
But he went, he kicked ass and he got the the Mongols out. But there is some reason then that the either the patron that paid for the ruse or the ruse himself said, you know what, I'm actually going back to where I came from, which was the city of Moscow. So he settled in Moscow, and that's how Moscow became a place in Russia. Okay. Because it's the Rus. And that's a version of that's a, a, a one version of why Russia is called is called Russia. Yeah. But um okay. what about flags with Chapter Cooper? <laughs> no no, but that's what that's what Putin was saying. Putin's saying like this aspects on this may not be true. <laughs> no no I don't know that. no but Putin was saying pulling it from his ass. <laughs> no 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 Putin was saying the reason we're going back to Ukraine is because we own Ukraine. We started off as it was ours initially. All right. It's their spiritual homeland. That's well, what he was calling it. No, I know, I know. He actually wrote a big long manifesto before the war, where, and it was almost like a ranting manifesto, where he just was saying, you know, the reason this and that and that, they're, they're part of Russia, so I'm just saying they should be part of Russia. That's before he invaded anything. Which is fine. I mean, you can say that's like, okay, you know, and again, it's going back. My ancestors conquered well, your land, yeah. it's ours yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, but all the people that lived there had a huge vote, and they overwhelmingly said, we want independence. We want to be our own country. That was recognized by the international community. May I approach that? You may. We've because got guns. The bits that Russia conquered back recently mm. in the middle of this war, yeah. they had a vote. And that vote overwhelmingly voted in favor of, yes, now we're going to stay with Russia, please. Don't kill us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, you, you can, can make whatever you want. If you oh, want. Yeah. As they look off camera. The, the don't yeah. kill us part that you whispered there. No, like I mean, that, obviously I mean, those were a whole lot of things. What I'm saying is, rigged. you know, you can always present, oh, this was democratically decided, whatever. And by the way, you're right, 100%. And that statement you added of international, recognized by the international community, hugely relevant. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, it's like Russia can go back home and say, oh, no, look at this other bullshit vote. But look at this real vote we just did last week. And they want to be part of us, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, another thing that's interesting is that Egypt at the moment. Um, well, so Gina that's Burke. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. We're going there. Should we bother going I, there? You see, I'm one of the things I'm worried about this too is his family are going to get backing from some uh, right wing Catholic evangelical nutjobs, right? Who have money. Yeah. And they're going to say, "Keep doing what you're doing, guys. You're doing great. You're doing God's work. Here's some cash." Right? And that's they're going to keep themselves in the public eye. They're going to keep pushing this ridiculous agenda. And we're going to have to put up with them for way longer now. And I honestly think that if we just did what they, what we did to soccer hooligans back in the 80s, that it would be a way better tactic, as in ignore them. Don't give them publicity. Don't give them a platform. Don't give them a soapbox. And they'll just crawl away back under the rock. Well, what I think, because I wanted to kind of, when I, I think somebody sent me a WhatsApp, ha ha, something in his work, and joke, and I was like, I never even heard the name. So I Googled it, and I watched a YouTube video of him presenting his point to a journalist, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, at least I've heard his side of the story now. But it's so obviously flawed for one thing. Never mind trans rights or any of that stuff. Whether you think yay or nay about it, doesn't matter, right? Actually, yeah, can, can you, are you going to oh. say what his thing is? Just say it. Uh, just so we know. Oh, I see. If, what if somebody doesn't know? What actually, about? good point. Very good point. His point of view is no. I actually didn't hear a breakdown of him elaborating the starting block that landed him in trouble. He was already just dealing with the fact that he's in trouble. But I understand it's something along the lines of he was a teacher. There was some trans kid in the school, and he was refusing. No, nope, I'm not going to refer to them as they them. You know, they're a he yeah, in my mind, and I'm not going to change my pronouns or whatever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No. However you feel about that, I'm going to very much leave it aside and not comment on it at all, purely because that's a whole other topic yeah, yeah. that we can discuss in a minute if you want. But purely look at his argument, because he's very, very clear. In fairness, he's very well-spoken, very articulate, and very logical, which is great, because that makes a perfect person you can debate with. He was saying, my belief is, it's my religious belief that I don't, I don't believe that, I don't accept that, and it's my religious belief, and everyone should be allowed to practice their religious belief in this state, it's a free state, and no judge and no law in the land should ever be able to dictate anything against someone's religious belief. Which seems reasonable. On the, seems on the very, very, very surface of the video. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you cut that away even a tiny bit. Yeah, exactly. Someone says, my religious belief, 
I want to sacrifice virgins on a volcano. Well, okay, straight away, okay, wait, we've got to make it all about that. I don't want to everything else. So it's so obviously a flawed argument that clearly anyone who's jumping on his side, and again, if somebody comes to me and says, this is the reason I don't believe the trans should be whatever, let's hear you out. I really want to hear it. But if it's a dumbass, illogical, clearly flawed process and thought process, then it's like, I'm sorry, no, I'm out. I mean, I've heard you and you're full of shit. Next. Yeah, basically. And that's the problem with him. That's why it's kind of like an open and shut case, we're done. Don't do well. You're being too loud, Matt. No, no, we're just moving a bit. I, I should have set the volume lower yeah. initially. The sound recording was a little bit too loud initially. But, um. But anyway, sorry, that would be my opinion. Yeah. But you know what's interesting? Um, I spoke to people. I spoke to people lately. Who were like, oh, they were kind of sounding each other out first, and they were like, you know, um, like, hmm, what do you think about this? And then when they all saw what they all agreed, they're like, yeah, I agree with them. Which okay. is the end. Yeah. What those people agree with, because on the YouTube comments on that video that I watched, a lot of people were like, finally someone said it, fair play to him, he's a hero of, of our times. But you know, if somebody says to me, I'm against this whole thing, then whatever, that's fine. But those people are clearly just anti-trans and they're grabbing onto the coattails of an idiot. Yeah. And that's unfortunate because if you're anti-trans, formulate your own opinion and please tell me, I'm interested to hear it. Yeah. But he, he, he's anti-trans but presenting it in an articulate but stupid manner. He reminds me of, um, I can't remember the name of him. Donald uh, Trump. No, Stephen Hawking. No, no. <laughs> uh, I'll have to do this and I'll come back to it. But there is a guy who is... Stephen Colbert. No, he's super articulate. Stephen King. Super right wing, but a complete idiot. Oh. You know who I'm talking about. The American guy. Yeah. And he's so good at what he does is he does he goes around. You know where you're going wrong here, except calling him Stephen. It's Steve. Steve oh, what? Steve something. Steve. Okay, it doesn't matter. But ultimately he goes around to university campuses and he'll do this clearly extremist right wing, you know, pro abortion, something or other. No, and then no, these, that's another thing I was like, I would right when pro person. abortion. Or sorry, pro life anti abortion no. thing. Uh, I know what you're talking about. The guy who goes around to university. Yeah, sorry, go on. Keep on what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, but ultimately, what he does is he decides to engage in intellectual debates with fish in a barrel, 18 year old kids, and just gone to college, you know, not a clue yet, you yeah. know, but their opinions aren't formed. They, they yeah. know what to think, but they can't really articulate it well yet. Yeah. And he, there's loads of YouTube videos. This guy yeah. and I made stupid kid, but it's like, I mean, Steve Bannon. No, that, no that's Steve the one Bannon I was, is a... That's the one I was thinking of. Oh. But then I was like, but then Mary said goes around to colleges. Because I know the guy you're talking about that goes to colleges. But that's that's not what yeah. I'm that is, Steve Bannon is a thick, thick Egypt. Steve Bannon. Steve you're Bannon is actually. If you're listening, yeah. he is. He's, and he's not even a good speaker, by the way. He's a dumbass. I don't know I won't listen to him. Huh? I, I won't. Basically. We're all in agreement. Uh, eunuch. What's it? Not eunuch. Yeah, what's eunuch, the name? Yeah. Eunuch. Eunuch. Yeah. Eunuch. He's an Egypt. What is it? What's the middle word name? Because the middle is not. Is that not? That is his name. Eunuch. Eunuch. Not eunuch. I call him eunuch. Oh, you guys said eunuch. Eunuch. Sorry. Eunuch. Not eunuch. No. But anyway. Well, I mean, and, and of course their family has fallen. And this is the thing. Because we know that person. We are going to circle around to something, and I am going to do that now. Uh, you, when I when you talked about Platoon, and I mentioned that uh, it was the trilogy. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Oliver Stone had a trilogy of because he was in Vietnam. He did three movies. Born on Fourth of July. Yeah. His trilogy, oh. in my opinion, went because hmm. he started with Platoon, which was amazing. Then he did Born on the Fourth of July, which was pretty good. Then he did Heaven and Earth, which was uh, bro Heaven and Earth. I don't yeah, know that movie. Yeah, Joan Shin and I think Tom Berenger. No, Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, John Shin, John Shin and Tommy Lee Jones, yeah, and it's about a guy who brings a Vietnamese person home with him, and they marry and stuff. So it, it's not so much about Vietnam really as it's about the relationship after. Uh, Born on the Fourth of July, of course, isn't that much about Vietnam. It's more about the infantry's infantryman's experience after the war. Yeah, and of course, Platoon itself is about mm. his experiences in the war. Um, so I think that there's there's definitely a hierarchy. Of it's like a matrix syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Tough. Yeah. Your first movie was perfect. Yeah. Everything you do after this is gonna be shit. Yeah. Pretty much. 
pretty much. Um, and I definitely will be checking out the movie you mentioned earlier, Mart, uh, Sandcastle. I like the yeah. sound of it. Again, no, I gotta say, just to be clear. Yeah. Is it an all time classic? No. Is it one of the movies that I even recommend to a lot of people? Not even. <laughs> really? And I know this is a podcast, but I'm actually recommending it to YouTube because we watched Platoon as kids and I know we loved it. I know we loved that too. Yeah. It's got a couple of people in it though I like. I like Nicholas Holt. We'll get back to him. Uh, Henry Keneal, of course. Tommy Flanagan is another one of my favourites. Uh, he's a Scottish actor that has the, he's a brave heart and he's a son's anarchy. He's got scars. Going back to space. That's a good one. Glasgow Kids. I think that's what they call it, yeah. And it's my understanding that it's from an actual Glasgow Kids. I believe so, yes. Do you know what a Glasgow Kids is? No. This is, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, this is. You, uh, put a, I think the poor, way it works is. Warning, okay, poor, 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 poor warning. Poor warning. You put a knife up at someone's mouth, doesn't kind it? Kind of. You, put, you do a small cut. Oh, yeah, you do a small cut here and here. And then tell them a really funny joke. No, or kick, kick them in the nuts. Ah, and, when they, and when they scream, it splits, and then it's really hard to solve, but it leaves a nasty scar. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, son. Uh, it's uh, mm, uh, no Glasgow kiss is the right word for it because if I'm not mistaken, Glasgow kiss the headbutt. Oh yeah, Glasgow smile. Glasgow. That's the one. Mm. Glasgow. Now Nicholas Holt is in that movie that you mentioned earlier, Sandcastle. Is he beast from X Men? You were saying that's it, yeah. Okay. Him, but also in the movie we're going to talk about this week. Nice. The menu. So, oh, it's nice. It's his week. Thank you. That's the one. Yeah. So, um, so we've all seen this film, uh, The Fall. I actually let's I mean, do the obligatory statement. No. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! If, if you haven't seen it from now on, or if you haven't seen it, then from this point on, don't watch. So go watch spoiler. it and go back and hear yeah. it. I won't. You, you would back. not hear any spoilers from me, regardless of any review, any movie or TV show that we review. I will not spoil it. Oh, I won't say spoil it. Because you can review things without spoiling it. Well, I'm going to say you can review it without spoiling it by saying, I give this a five stars out of six or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, really, I'm going to say, I mean, if you're going to speak about the movie in any meaningful way. So, okay. And, so that's the question then. Are we reviewing it or are we talking about the movie? We're talking about the movie. All right. Okay, then spoilers. Yeah. And there will be many. <laughs> Uh, because we're just going to talk, just we have to talk outright. Yeah, about so if anyone hasn't, if you haven't watched the, the menu, stop and you care about spoilers, stop watching yeah. that. Yeah, which I would say, because for me, there's two types of movies, broadly speaking. You no, know, there's a housing type, but for the purpose of the discussion, I would break them into two types. There's what I would call a flat movie, they can be enjoyable. It's like John Wick is what I'd call a flat movie. You go in, you watch it, what you see on the surface is what it is. Spoiler alert. Assholes kill your dog. It's a revenge fantasy of I will kill every motherfucker in the valley for revenge. And it's very enjoyable and very satisfactory. John Wick is a great movie. So you're telling me you missed all the allegorical and subtext well, yeah, and just of that movie? I did. Ah. Because I feel some movies are, it's not a criticism of the movie, but some movies are flat. That's it, you've seen it, you've saw the surface, it's done. And you can still, they're very rewatchable and everything. One but I mentioned also. Other movies, yes, it, that's even better for better phrase. But other movies are, you watch it, they're fun, they're whatever, but sometimes they might be weird or don't make any sense, or there's, you know, they've gone for the stylistic over the practical and realistic and whatever. And, you know, like The Matrix to me is a perfect example. There's so much more meaning underneath the bonnet. If, yeah. if you want to look, you can choose to not look and enjoy the movie as a superhero movie, yeah. kind of thing. And I think if you're going to talk about a movie with depth and subtext and all the kind of things, you kind of have to spoil it. So, you know, but again, I'm okay with if I'm watching a breakdown of a movie or something, I listen to podcasts where it's not a review of a movie, but it's nerds talking nerd stuff. And I start talking about a movie I haven't seen and I'm like, oh, yeah. just give it a bit. Yeah. You know, and do they always give a spoiler? Honestly, I don't even know if they have. I think, I think they always do. And it almost a little bit annoys me when I'm watching a YouTube video. Now, it's different when you're doing a podcast, talking for an hour about 50 things. Do a spoiler alert if you're going to mention a movie. But sometimes you come across YouTube and it's like, video, breakdown of this movie. And then they start with, this is, oh, spoiler alert for the movie. Well, of course, spoiler alert for the only thing I'm here to see <laughs> and the only thing you're going to talk about for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Clearly, this is inherent in the title of the video. I don't know why they bother there. Well, I guess but it's, it's a good idea for us. Yeah, well, I guess it's, uh, they probably do it because they know some people were thinking. Idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh, here's, here's the thing that's called spoiling the... the Avengers in-game movie. <gasps> I can't believe he spoiled it. 
Now we know that there was an endgame in it. Yeah. But anyway, and they avenged. So, um, what do you think of the movie? You sort of now, before we go there, I'm going to ask you, why did you, because it was your decision, what was your decision? What made you choose the menu? Okay, here's what made me choose the menu. When I saw it, because um, I heard about it, I don't know if it's up for an Oscar or if it's in up for nominations this year. I think it's not by the Oscars, but it's Okay, but, or the Emmy, or so, I didn't even know if we get the name. But basically, the Golden Globes or something, basically, it was a good film. Okay, and um, when I, so myself and uh, the guy sat down and watched it, and it was, it kind of blew me away because I thought it was, I thought it was going to be a, um, I thought it was going to be a horror story, like like a horror film, I mean. So I thought there'd be like, you know, jump scares and all this kind of thing, you know. So because I went in expecting, um, because I went in expecting a jump scary kind of, oh, this film is so jumpy and scary. I was like very, very, very impressed with, I was over, not overly impressed. I was very impressed by the, uh, the, the message it has. So that's why I was like, there's definitely something to talk about in the film. Because it's exactly as I said, in a one dimensional film, there's only so much depth. You, like you can talk about loads of funny parts of American Pie, but it doesn't have that much depth. That's the depth of a teaspoon. Well, I mean, it has the depth of... Look, wait, wait. No, don't start talking about a whole other film. That's <laughs> folks. <laughs> we can, we can, we can, what's worth the deviation is. Yeah. So, but basically, so, the menu. I liked it because it reflects uh, society excellently, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, um, I agree with that. I think um, the director of my, was it my lot, my lot? Uh, I think he did a fantastic job of, of kind of holding the mirror up to the rich, yeah. uh, the haves and the have-nots. And the way he did it was really, really well. The way he um, had the chef and uh, Margot were mirrors of each other. Uh, both risen to the top of their profession and both tired of what they were having to do for that profession. And both kind of, mm. ugh, with it all. Oh, yeah. uh, I thought it was really, really well done the way he did that. I thought it was, it was, it was excellently shot, everything, the way it was put together. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Really well written. And they chose their actors and, and the cast really, really well yeah. as well. Um, there wasn't a weak, there wasn't a weak actor no. for me. I thought it was really well So done. I've, like, I've actually seen, like, coming up to, coming up to today, I looked at one or two videos that talked about, just get other people's opinions on um, YouTube videos. That was like, just get other people's vi views on the people that were, because basically it's about the, the guests who were at the table. Yeah. So I remember the guests, there was like the guy. The old couple who've been going for years. Yeah. The two restaurant critics, the three hedge fund dicks, the uh, movie actor yeah. and his assistant. Yeah. And there was his mother who didn't get much food. And there was um, Nicholas Colt and Anna Taylor Jones' yeah. characters. So actually, it's funny, Barry, because of the other videos I watched, you're the first, you're the only person I mentioned the mother. Yeah, she was and, brilliant. Yeah, and I think the mother is actually hugely important. In Massively, posting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's important because of one line, when he was like, "All you people that disappoint me and her there," I was like, "Oh, that's why she's there." Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, by the rest now, she wasn't taken in for dinner every time, was she? No. Oh no, no, no. Those this is her first. first the, yeah. Last. So I love how when. I can't remember exactly. Shit was hitting the fan. Things were going down. They were running around, and she just went over, got a bottle out of the ice buckets, went over. She knew it was coming. coming. She knew it was coming. Yeah, she knew it was coming. And so did so did Tiger, of course, which I thought was a really good twist. Oh that was a, yes, that, yes, was, yes. that he knew about, that that it was coming, and it kind of, but it also it kind of confused me a little bit. This is something I was kind of going, why would he do that if he knows what's coming? The way he was told at the start, don't take pictures of your food, and as soon as the food comes, he's taking pictures of it. Who's he taking the pictures for? Okay, this is a, he knows no. what's coming at the end. This is exactly you. You. you I was kind of saying, mm. oh, I know why is I picked the film. No, no, I was thinking. I, I know I watched the film. I know I want to talk about the film. That is exactly why, because to me the most important line is when Chef says, "You could have overpowered me if you want to, but you did nothing." Obviously, I'm paraphrasing. Remember that part? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. And okay. I didn't think it was true because... No, it is true, Barry. Because Chef is a tough... Like, because... 
There, there was enough people there. No, no, okay. there wasn't. There was the, maybe the movie guy, maybe the three headroom guys, and then Tyler, right? So he knew, first of all, he knew Tyler wasn't going to attack him because yeah. he's in on it. So that gives you, and then you've got the, the restaurant critic and the other old guy, who are not anyway in any shape or form. So you've got like the old and the women against seven or eight chefs and what seems to be a five or six security guys. Security guys. But do you remember the point where Margot said, um, you know, when she kind of realised the game and there's a lot to be said about that, but ultimately said, ah, oh, give it to me to go and she was walking away. And do you remember when she was walking away and then she turned back feeling guilty? Oh, and the, the, the woman was like, go And the away. woman waved her on. Yeah. Why didn't anyone else, out of desperation or nothing else, just say, oh, wait, me too, I want food to go. They didn't even bother. Yeah. Why? Well, but, well, but here's why. Because, um, I, think they, they, I think they accepted that, that he wouldn't let them. Yes, but no substitutions. It, no, but it's not just and Margot herself was a substitution. No, but it's not just. It's you see, to me the film isn't about. Oh, Margot got away. Obviously, the film is about Margot got away. Obviously, okay. But the way I look at the film, and this is what I thought was interesting today, when I looked at when I went in uh, the two videos I listened to, one was talking about how, one said this film is a commentary on food, on restaurants. Clearly it is. I mean, no, no, it's clearly it is. There yeah. has to be some degree of yeah. I don't yeah, think that's clear. the main theme. No, yeah. but that isn't the main... I don't... I, I, I don't just... Uh, what's, what's I don't think that's what the movie is about. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly. Like I don't think movie. that's why director Mark Mylod exactly did the film. Yeah. The, because I do know that Mark Mylod was on an island. Or the writer, maybe. The, right, no, the writer, there was, the writer to, was on an movie. island. And they were actually going to yeah. that type of restaurant. Yeah. And they're only one in Norway. And a boat left, and he was like, "Oh crap, I'm stuck here." Okay, and then he came up kind of with the idea of this film. Okay, yeah, but to me, the film is about it's about society, yeah. and all the different groups of tables represent society. Okay, so the three head front people, they're obviously the bankers who will, they're they're pure. No, the, obviously, when I say the bankers, I'm talking about a very general term for the people with money type of thing. You know, mm -hmm. who they can do something. Okay, they, they could have done something, but now it's too late, type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the, the old people who have money, they're the old money who could have done something, but they're like, they, they've, they've been here loads of times before, they've seen all this happening, they just want to spend their money, they don't care about stuff, okay? Um, there was the, the, va the actor, the, the old woman, first of all, was the... Was the, the the mother was like I often find it interesting when people say like, um, you know, oh it's the younger generation type of thing is messing us up. It's like the older generation raised and created the younger generation, you know. So that's what's happened. That's what the mother is. She's yeah, what's your afraid the childish father. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this case, the mother created the monster that is the chef type of thing, you know, um, and. Like, as a society, we know that bad stuff is happening, you know, you walk by poor people, you walk by homeless people, but in general, none of us do anything, you know, it's like, what's worse, is it worse to, is it worse for two people to have a fight on the street, yeah, and to threaten, like, oh, no, you're threatening society, what's worse, that, or not voting? You know? This is literally a whole other rabbit hole that would take a whole. No, other no, it is a whole other rabbit hole. But the, but this is the point of the of the this is the point of the film, I think. The point of the film is questioning. It's like it's it's looking at people who you had a chance to do stuff, you did nothing. You know, that, and that's what the film is to me. It's like all these people could have done stuff, but the rich people thought that nothing could touch them. Um, the the famous celebrity guy thought that nothing could touch him, thought that he was above everything, and he was impressed that people would recognize him and all this kind of stuff. So it was like, and how does his, how does his assistant fit into that? So the assistant, yeah, I felt the assistant, but I think the assistant's role is almost showing us, you know, this movie could have been allegorical in, you know, the chef is some dispenser of harsh justice, and all these people who represent corrupt and rotten parts of society are getting their just desserts but then the assistant was like 
you know, she stole money from her boss. But the boss was like, the boss was like, I know. And she was like, I know you know. Yep. So it was overtly, but then he said, you know, what college did you go to? An expensive one. Yeah. Have you had colleges? No. Then died. Yeah. So Sorry, I think that's I showing that he isn't some he's not some instrument of God's justice, you know. He's a psychopathic asshole who admittedly a lot of the people might deserve some kind of punishment, but his punishment maybe is too much. And definitely she didn't deserve to die. You know, oh, maybe you were lucky enough or privileged enough that you, you know, over the states where college is ridiculously expensive, managed to have your education paid for. That's not worthy of a death sentence. Yeah, but that's his criteria, isn't it? Yeah, but they're yeah, rich, but therefore. Yeah, exactly. I guess it's just that bit shows that it isn't a black and white, good versus evil kind of thing. Yeah. Do you he remember? Do you remember why he said he he picked up this actor in particular? Because he, yeah, because he saw a movie and he's like, and he was like, like one day I off. had one day yeah. off. <laughs> one day off. <laughs> and I think that would speak a lot to people who, especially working like nurses and doctors mm-hmm. and stuff, were like, I have one day off and two weeks in a row. Yeah. I wasted it watching this yeah. shit movie. But um, what I found was funny is, I don't know if you recognize the actor. Well, this is totally derailing the conversation, but uh, do you remember Carly Joe's Way? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Billy Bronx up in the Bronx. Up in the Bronx, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, that you wasn't remember the same me? actor. <gasps> was it not? No. I'm oh. afraid it wasn't. I'm afraid it wasn't. Really? Yeah. Um, John, uh, no, it wasn't John the Lucas Zimu that was in Billy Bronx of the Bronx. Oh, wait, no, it was. Sorry, you're right, it was. Because I, I was having a conversation with someone else about another um, another actor. John, I can't pronounce his name. I was going to say, it was like one of those weird things where people mix up the same actor. You know who else was in it? In, in, in Carlito's Way, there was the guy who bought the, remember who bought the pub? I haven't seen Carlito's uh, Way in years. No, no, but he bought the pub and he's the dad that's in, um... The menu. No, no, he's the dad that's in, um, Wednesday. Oh, I haven't seen Wednesday either. Oh, what? Okay, then, well, that's... But just to be clear, Wednesday... Is okay. It's not screamingly good that you have to watch it and it can't be missed. You know, just saying. John Duguizamo, yeah. I'm trying to remember who, who I was. I can't remember who I was talking to somebody about somebody else. Um, and I'm always confusing the, that actor with that other oh, one. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. Ah, so and uh, actually, just on that, Felicity, the, um, the movie star's uh, assistant. Uh, I, I, I thought she played her part really, really well, but I actually enjoyed watching her because I had seen her on um, Critical Role. Oh, uh, Exa- really? Exandria Unlimited, yes, she played a, she played a part on uh, one of their... Uh, so she's a nerd? Oh yeah, she's a nerd nerd. Um, yeah, she, she played she, she had a, a part in one of those and it was really nice to see, because it's one thing seeing them kind of uh, improvise acting on a, on a, mm. on a D&D live, live play, but... Then seeing them actually acting as well is is now it's extra bad that she died. She uh, didn't deserve to die. No, no, it's so, but one thing I'll say about the ending of that movie because if if you come into this movie kind of again expecting a vanilla, I don't know what you call it, like non, a you know, superficial kind of movie, and yeah. again not a criticism of superficial movies, which I love, but it's like I would be you'd be sitting at the end of the movie thinking, oh come on, because at the end when they all kind of seemed to accept their fate, I think the movie went went for a stylistic end rather than a realistic end mm-hmm. because if you get eight people and say all of you sit down calmly now and we're going to put this thing on you and then this thing and then we're going to burn you alive and everyone's like oh okay oh, well i guess there's no point in trying because there's a man over there who's probably going to stop me you're still going to try yeah oh, someone's going to panic someone's going to panic and scream and break yeah. down or something yeah. and the fact that they all silently and peacefully yeah, well, that's, resign good to point, that's, good point. that's yeah. unrealistic yeah. yeah but it's stylistic. but it's not a criticism yeah, exactly because it's they stylistic. went for stylistic and a stylistic ending, yeah, which is is a good thing. And if they yeah. moved, they'd ruin that beautiful palace. Exactly, yeah, the beautiful yeah. dessert. That was the thing. Yeah. It's like, did you ever watch the movie? Which, when I went in and watched it, I literally thought I wanted to stop watching it. It was the worst movie ever. I can't remember it. Oh my god, I can't remember the name of it. There's a friend of mine who's really big into it, and he'd have to keep talking. But it's a. Uh, is this, this a, like the, the bit really movie. impressive from above or something? Is it? No, uh, it's well, that's a, Simpsons. Is it? The what? This, I bet this looks really impressive from above. It's um, because all those people sitting at that table, including the sh- and and people in that room, the chefs and everything, they have no idea if that thing they did. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sure yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can be steak. You can be sure they practice it. Yeah. Uh, maybe they did, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 This is your grand work, and you're going to die doing it. You're going to be like, 
Give me a few room throughs at least. Yeah. Mm. But no, it's a movie called The Grand Budapest Hotel. No, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, oh he's also Ralph Fiennes. Yeah, Ralph Fiennes. Yeah, yeah. Is he? Yeah. But yeah. that movie is what, it, well, it's what I would say to anyone who would be going in, if you were ever going to watch it. I did see it, but Okay, good, good, but it's a stylistic it's movie. Yeah. It's not a realistic movie. And I wouldn't think of, oh, oh, I yeah. would watch this movie, it won an Oscar. And I'm watching it again, everything here is stupid and none of it makes sense, and what the hell? And then I spoke to someone who thought it was great, and they were telling me how the arch was shot, and each scene is symmetrical and all and the color. Like, oh, okay, I missed all of that. Well, that's what I remember. To Paul? No. Oh, I forget. But that's like, Marty, remember, was a voice you said that when you were looking at uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? That was like, if you look up Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and you're like, uh, why are people flying? Yeah. But then, because every, all the rest of the film seems really realistic. It's a 20 year old reference, but. Still valid, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, but it's like when if if you're told this is ninja magic that's being used in the film, then you're like, all right, okay, absolutely. The yeah, film is a I totally wasn't expecting this is a kung fu martial art movie, and then they were just flying around, and I was like, no, no, this is just I just no, I reject this, it's stupid. And then after I was talking with one of my friends, Richie actually, he was like, all right, oh, it was ninja magic. I was like, ah, uh, okay, I wish I kind of had that mindset when I was watching the movie. <laughs> You know, I think, <laughs> rather than fighting it and rejecting it. Yeah, but ultimately, I think the ending of this movie in particular, considering it was grounded up to that point, went off into the yeah. unrealistic. But the film, I, I think, is like, I've heard loads, of, like, I'm looking at IMDb here and they call it horror and thriller, but I've heard loads of people call it a comedy satire. It's definitely more a comedy satire than a horror thriller. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. better. I mean, that's a, I think those tags are way off. Yeah. Wes Anderson was the person I was thinking of. Wes Anderson, of yeah. course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. No, so. the, menu, the other thing about the menu um, is, I think it's, it's one of those films, and which is quite rare, I think, deserves a second viewing. Yes. For the simple reason that there, uh, it seems to me that there, there's, because I haven't seen it, I haven't done a second viewing, there, I think there's a lot, a lot of foreshadowing in it. Uh, Barry, I started watching it. Like in the second time. Okay. And I only saw the first 10 minutes. Which is enough because I know, yeah. I, and I remember the con- there was conversations about money because between Margot and Tyler at the very start, yeah. where she's, because I remember her saying, well, you're paying for it. Which, when you watch the first time, it's just a girl saying to a guy, well, he's, he's asked her all the day, and he's, and he's old fashioned, he's paying for it. Yeah. But then later on, you find out she's actually an escort. You're paying you're for paying it. You're paying for and it. And she even, remember, there's a whole thing about, no, no, don't be smoking. And it's like, why? Is smoking bad for. My health. It's like, don't be smoking. It'll ruin your palate. Yeah, I don't think she meant anything about the health. I think he just went straight in with it. You'll ruin your palate. Stop smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he, no, no. My point is, he, it, stop smoking. And it wasn't about because of your health. No, he meant stop palate. smoking just for your palate. But then she said, oh, you'll be, you'll be the end of me or something. Yeah, this so there was that. Oh, like, and, then, and then when the first shot they show of the beach, it's full of dead black trees. Yeah. You know, so again, I don't know if the, the, the director was like, oh, look, there happens to be cool trees there. But I would like to think that the director was like, oh, yeah, look, this is more foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the trees look burnt and they look like. There was one, there was one I was reading about. And it wasn't foreshadowing, it was just an interesting little tidbit about the film. So when they were being led from the boat to the restaurant, there were goats that walked yes. in front of them. Yeah. And apparently, a lot of uh, abattoirs, they have goats that are. They're, they're these particular type of goats that, are, that stay calm no matter what. And they walk in front of the cattle and the cattle think, oh, this place must be cool. They can, they can smell oh. death. They can smell death coming at them. And they can hear the... <laughs> and the people go, oh, my balls! Um, they're still, they walk calmly and they follow these huh. goats. And apparently the, there's goats in the movie that... Uh, there are, the yeah, 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 walk yeah, yeah. Of, or walk yeah. behind and it's kind of like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're walking in, yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to. Watch, I think I'll have to watch it again sometime to see how much of that I pick up on it. Because, yeah. uh, but I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I would definitely rate it like seven or eight out of ten. Seven or eight out of ten. Seven or eight out of ten. Yeah. Is that a seven point five? Yeah, call it a seven point five. <laughs> Mark, what would you give it out of ten? I would say it was good. I'll good out of ten. numbers because it's comic. Yeah, good out of ten. Good out of ten. Because it's like. Let's all, use, let's all use totally different metrics. Yes, <laughs> you give it two stars. I'll get three. <laughs> I, oh, come on, you have to give it something out of ten. You don't have to. I would it's like a six, right? Yeah, okay. Are no, you, wait, no, are six you, would be average. Yeah, I would say six, good as seven. 
Okay. I even feel that's a little bit unjust for it, but yeah. But see, also, I'm going to say, full disclosure, I watched it literally just before you came in the door. Yeah, yeah. I had to stop for dinner, I had to stop to go put the clean load of the dishwasher, clean the place, keep going back to it again, then run in the room, watch the end. I think when you watch a movie like that, you ruined it on yourself. Don't blame anyone else and don't blame the movie. So I, I can't really say I'm giving it a fair shake at all. And that's my own fault. Yeah. Yeah, overall, I thought it was delicious. I think. Um, oh, I think the I film. Think you with that. That was a good <laughs> yeah, I think I'd give it a because I did like the film particularly. I think I'd give it an eight. Okay, but that's not going up in increments of point five. So it's not eight. It's not seven point. It's not seven seven point five eight. I would go seven seven point one seven point two. So in other words, you're saying you're giving it 80%. Yeah. Because really, oh. I'm going to say another thing. I never like this whole star out of five and star out of 10. I think stars out of five is lazy, right? That's lazy. Stars out of 10, a little bit better. Yeah. Come on. Give me percent percentage. is proper order. Percentage, yeah. Granular, which you need. Well, I mean, okay. 7.5 is the same as 75%. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. But three stars out of five yeah. does mean... Well, four stars out of football really fields. fields. What's that, 36%? Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's one. But, um... Is it better or worse than what's that meteor movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? Don't look up. Oh, Don't wait. Look up. Barry, what did you? Yeah. yeah. Is better or worse than Don't Look Up? Better. Better or worse than Don't Look Up? Why are we using question. Why are we using that as the bar? How is that arbitrary? Just pick it up. The, no, no, but I like Don't no, Look Up it's, because it's, it's also a social commentary satire. I enjoyed being, the end of Don't Look Up. The second half of Don't Look Up way better. I like it. I like the the first like twenty minutes and the last half really? hour. I thought the middle part was just like dragging on and on. Okay, we get the commentary you're trying to make. We oh, get yeah, it. Yeah. Stop hitting us over the head with it. Move on with the story. No, I'm like, like oh, hit me with more commentary. Go on. Yeah, you love the commentary. All over your face. Yeah. So, the, I think it was, when I think back at Don't Go Up Now, I think it was probably like as good as, as Don't Go Up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think Donald Cup was better. You thought Donald Cup was better? Yeah. See, I'm kind of thinking it was probably better, it's just that I don't remember how I felt loads at the time. About Donald Cup? Yeah. Mm. But well, I do you remember. You told me to watch Donald Yeah, Cup. no, yeah, because I was, read, I was reading. Yeah, I, I, I was like, this is a brilliant film. If we were doing the podcast back then, we would have definitely done an episode about Donald Cup. Yeah, we definitely. We can still do an episode about Donald Cup. Yes, we can. Next time. Mm. Can we? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. I mean. Well, I mean, at least we've gone by the same. If we're doing Donald Cup, though, then we'd probably do 12 Angry Men. Because like there's obviously no limit on how far back we can go. Well, why not? Although that movie Metropolis, Fritz Lang, he is an up and coming. Up and coming. But you know, uh, you know a movie I really enjoyed, and it's a movie that I haven't met anyone who's not seen it. A movie called Circle. Oh, uh, is that the film with Tom Hanks? No, oh. because it has no one famous in it, and I don't know, as far as I know, it's completely unknown. But it's just. There's a bunch of people. No one famous. And that's like me and Barry were like, we'll show you if there's someone famous. Well, actually, there probably is now. Actually, I don't know. Probably not. But I, yeah. it's a movie I'd recommend. And it's so random because it's just a Is it foreign? No, no. It's a very, very uh, American movie. Okay. I, and, uh, and you can accuse me of being racist because I thought it was foreign because the first face that was on the trailer was <laughs> an Asian guy. If it's what I'm thinking of. Oh, damn it. There's a movie with Tom Hanks with the circle. Never mind. I'd have to find it and bring it up next week. Oh, yeah, okay. But it's, there's this, um, everyone, I know, you know, do you remember how Cube started? Or how, um... Held captive and faced with their Im- imminent executions? Yes. 50 strangers are forced to choose the one person among them who deserves to live. Yes. And it's, uh, but it's so random because it's one of these, like I said, if, if you remember how the Cube started or how, um, the first Saw started where it's like, Oh, a bunch of strangers wake up and they don't remember anything and they're just stuck in this yeah. prison type thing. Yeah. But it's like a, another person gets killed, executed every minute. So the movie is like an hour long and, you know, every minute somebody's dying in the movie. And, uh, you know, they're just trying to philosophically debate who deserves to live and die really quickly while the movie's going on. Yeah, it's very good. I, I really enjoy that movie. That's exactly my kind of movie anyway. Yeah, okay. But so again, what sort of- I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. Yeah. So in that case, guys, I think um, um, one last that we have one little, more time. <laughs> one, one more one last little trivia on uh, the menu, which is one of the things I love when they do things like this in movies. The chefs in the background were trained on um, making those dishes. 
so that any time they'd be caught, whether advertently or inadvertently, in the background, they were actually going to be doing what they would have been doing had they been real chefs in real life making those actual dishes. Oh, were they real chefs or were they actors? No, no, they're actors. Really? They're actors, but they're trained in making. So they worked in. They were working on their stations on the. On the course they were supposed to be working on, on the part of the course they were supposed to be working on at that given time. That's not really oh, hard to do. Because very difficult when to you're do. Shooting a movie. Yeah, it's very difficult to do, but it meant that there was no. Ah, look, he was making, you can see plainly he was doing something for dessert. <laughs> yeah. But there's still not the main course. He was doing a hamburger. Yeah. Um, so they, they actually trained them to, be, to, to look like they knew what they were doing. And to, yeah, yeah. Because obviously they weren't going to put those dishes together. To, the, the ones they walk out and leave on the tables, they were done by professionals with yeah. prop people. Probably not yeah, sure, yeah. probably prop people. Probably made from paint, <laughs> you know, mouse yeah. hunters. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought that was really that interesting. Good, I, love, I love when they put that sort of detail. Yeah, in. yeah. Their second AD as well. Their uh, the the second what do you call it? Se- second the, the, the director was actually a guy who directed one of those um, American fan, the cuisine shows. Like, oh yeah, uh, because it looked it did look exactly like a cuisine yeah, show. Yeah, I hundred percent. I love the. Um, you know, they, they broke down the meat yeah. and whatever thing, but then when you man, they put them under pressure. You go make this dinner right now, and he's like, oh, God. Yeah. And then it showed at the end, the breakdown, I was like, his shit meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put this together blandly. Yeah. <laughs> Crappy blandly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's shitty. Yeah. Leaks or whatever it was. Yeah, very good. So, um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and for tuning in. Any references that we made in this will probably be in the show notes. Is that a thing? Show us, what are they? There will be the details that I'll put in um, for the one true God, the algorithm. So what is the show notes exactly? You like put in It's the, like... I mentioned the circle, so you'll put in the... Well, in the it, if it's here. like, if, if we talk specifically about something, we'll put it, I can put a reference to it, like in the... So if I'm randomly going on about, oh, there's this guy in World War Two who did this thing, you can be like, oh, wait while I find a link and try to link it. Uh, yeah. No, I won't do it with everything because I won't do it with everything. But if we talk loads, like I'll have a link to the menu, obviously. I'll have, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. But basically, stuff will be in the show notes. And I'll get the uh, Patreon up and running as soon as possible. So if patrons want to start giving us, I don't know what the minimum amount is that you're allowed to do in Patreon. But uh, let's aim for that. And uh, that's it. We will see you in two weeks. Is it? There and thereabouts. There and thereabouts. Nice. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Let's do a perfectly timed middle of the table fist bump like we did before.